You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It's Poetry Day on The Coffee Hour. I'm I'm, I'm very okay with this. <laughs> You're very okay with this. Well, you know, poetry isn't the worst. It's not. Not even <laughs> I, close. I stole that from someone. <laughs> Thanks to Concordia <laughs> University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. It's been a while since we've had a chance to talk with poet Tanner Olson of Written to Speak. Tanner, welcome back to The Coffee Hour. Thank you. It's it's good to be with you all. And shout out to Concordia, Wisconsin. That's where I went. Hey. Alumni. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yay, Concordia, Wisconsin. Well, it is an exciting day. It is Tuesday, November 9th, which means that's a big day for Written to Speak, right? It is. It is. I have a new book out today. It's called Walk a Little Slower, a Collection of Poems in Other Words. I think the last time that I spoke with you all, I had just released As You Go during the pandemic. And so this is the next book. I am, you know, it sounds weird to say, but I'm learning to say it. I am extremely proud of this book and I wrote it. So it sounds weird to say, but like, I'm just, I really believe in the words and I believe that this book can be helpful and hopeful. And so I'm excited that it's now out and into the world. I am too. I am. I, I've enjoyed what I've got to, what I've gotten to read so far. Mm -hmm. Sarah's um, coming during the book now. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is how it went down. <laughs> so new book, this is exciting, but you don't just write poetry. You also speak poetry, thus written to speak the, the, right. the name of your, your website and all your materials. So what's new in the life of Tanner Olson and written to speak? Oh, Everything is starting to, I guess, bloom again, right? So the pandemic is kind of ending. And so now things are starting to happen where I'm, I'm booking new events. I have a, an upcoming tour in Texas later this this month. And I've started booking things in, in Minnesota and Oklahoma. And so soon I'll, I'll be sharing poetry, doing like nights of poetry, storytelling. And um, I don't advertise this, but I do make jokes. But it's a, it's a lot of pressure to call yourself a comedian. And I'm just not, I'm not there in my career yet. And then I also speak. So I'll occasionally occasionally do Sunday services or I'll speak at colleges or youth groups or wherever someone's like, Hey, we, we want to hear from you. And, and I, I love to do that kind of stuff. So right now things are starting to open back up and getting back out on the road and, and being face to face with people, which is really the best way that I like to share poetry. Now I share a lot on the internet, but it's, it's just great to, to sit with people and to, and to listen to their questions and to look them in the eyes and, and, and share these things that I've kind of poured over for the last year, year and a half. Yeah. What difference does it make to be actually with people when you share your poetry? Because I follow you on social media and I love all of the like little snippets of poetry that you share. And most days I'm like, oh man, you are talking to me right now. <laughs> what, what, what is that like to actually be with people when you're sharing your poetry? Yeah. Well, I, I love sharing the stuff online, but that's, it, it, most of those things are like pieces from a larger piece, like a line or two that I'll just share. But when you're, when you're, when you're sitting in a room with people, they get to hear you say the line that you've written or the lines that you've struggled over. Like they get to hear the, hear my voice go up and down. They get to hear, they get to see me like almost cry. Cause I, let's be honest, I'm a poet. I'm a pretty emotional, I'm a big, but then I also get to, I get to play off of their their, their body language. And it sounds weird to say, but like their energy as well. There's something about being in a room with people and delivering something that means something to you and will hopefully mean something for them. And, and I think poetry for, for all the things that it is, it, it truly is a gift to other people. Like I, I, write, I wrote a lot of these people, like these poems, I wrote them for me, but I wrote them for me to share with other people because, you know, kind of like you said, like, um, some of the things I've written, they, that's what other people need to hear as well. And so it's, it's fun being in a room with people. And like I said, too, it's like, it's not just like a night of poetry. Like I'm telling stories, I'm attempting to make jokes. And usually I'll have like a musician with me as well. So it's just like a, a good night to get off of the couch and to do something different. It sounds very cultural. I like it. Enlightening, entertaining even. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, I'm when not sure anyone's ever used the word enlightening before, but let's go with that. Let's lean really <laughs> heavy into that. Okay. So when you're not at a live event with people attending a live event, you know, the other, what, 300 days of the year, what is a day like in the life of a poet, Tanner Olson? You know, what what's daily life like when you're an, I wasn't quite sure how to describe <laughs> you, creative entrepreneur, writer, speaker, artist person. 
That's exactly it. I believe that's who I am. As a as an independent artist and writer, like you have to wear a lot of hats. But so like a normal day for me would be like, I'll get up, I'll, st- I'll do my morning routine and then I'll, I'll start writing for a little while and then I'll get distracted and I'll do some emails. Then I'll get back to writing because I'm supposed to be writing because I'm a writer. And then I'll be like, wait, now I can go back to emails and see what's happening. And then usually like in the, in the afternoon, I'll try to do some sort of like learning, whether that's like reading, listening to podcasts, going for a walk, watching what other people are doing online and how they're creating and what they're creating and seeing if that can like spark any ideas for me. Most of my afternoons, I spend editing the things that I wrote in the morning, packing up orders to ship out, creating graphics, and then most, most just and then questioning my entire existence. So, and all the life choices that I ever made, because that's what we do as, as creatives. Um, but yeah, it is a lot of like, it is a lot of thinking and some days my my job doesn't feel like a job. It really does feel like, like a gift, but I also, I come at, come at my work, uh, like kind of like the same way uh, a basketball player will approach game. Basketball is a big part of, was a big part of my life. And then I wish it still was today, but the way that I used to approach the game of basketball is the way that I approach writing. So I sit down and I, I want to be the best and I want to give the time to it. And I want to make sure that I'm putting in as much as I can for the people who are following my work and are looking for something new to read or to wrestle with. Mm-hmm. Where do you get your inspiration from? Because that the the life of a creative can be a very interesting life, and and finding your inspiration in, in all sorts of different maybe random places. But where do you seem to find your inspiration from when you write these poems? Yeah, I think for the creative or the artist, the inspiration is this. It's like, it's just a, it's a weird thing. Like we know it's there, but sometimes we, it's like not. And so you have to like create your own inspiration or you have to go find it. And so I, I, I'm, I'm really inspired by just the questions that my friends and I are asking, the things that I wake up thinking about. I, I spend a lot of time writing kind of about the, the past. So like a lot of like nostalgia for me helps, helps create the things that I write. But oftentimes like I'll just investigate the world, which sounds kind of strange or super hippie but like it's true like i just i'm kind of watching what's happening with the world and i'm trying to write through that pull out some pieces that maybe can connect with somebody else or you can see the heaviness and you can also see the hope and so how can we tie those things together in you know 250 words and i also want to have fun with my writing like i I, as i was reading through uh my new book walk a little slower i write a lot about gluten like (laughs) There's a poem about cake. I mentioned cinnamon rolls. Like it's just, I mean, there's pizza mention. It's so it's like I'm inspired by food, which and like just just if it's in front of you, let's can we write about it? And then can we connect that to what's happening in the world and what we're feeling and and believing and wrestling with? I was right there with you though, in I think it was the first story in Walk a Little Slower yeah. when you were remembering the visit to KFC with your grandparents, <laughs> as you yeah. described, like the the smell of of like fried chicken just wrapping its arms around you. I was right there with you. Yeah. Um, but it does like that when the when you said I think that you heard the door chime when you walked in, as if it were announcing that you made the right decision. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. It's- yeah, that takes me right back to like the late eighties and yeah. Mm-hmm. It's true. I think that's where that's I was introduced to sports as well. Was at, at that's, KFC? Yeah. Do you remember that? They had sports at that's, KFC? Sporks. Oh, sporks. I thought you said sports. I was like, I didn't I didn't think there was chicken <laughs> sports. No, um, <laughs> man, I love, <laughs> love a chicken good sport contest. Um <laughs> sporks. That's sorry. I totally derailed us there. Um no, no, no. so I've heard about sporks before. We actually, during the pandemic, I bought four silver sporks off of Amazon and it was the best purchase I've ever made. Just that is amazing. Have, having sporks. I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of getting rid of all of my forks and spoons and we're just going all sporks in our house. <laughs> Those sound like they could be painful though. If they're like real metal, that sounds brutal. But it's so wow. efficient. All right. Well, now that I've derailed this, let's take us to some good poetry um, before we have to take a short break. Would you want to share uh, a poem with us, maybe from Walk a Little Slower, before we take our break today? (laughs) Yeah, since this is the coffee hour, uh, I have a poem titled Coffee on, if you have your book, it's on page 32. And and I wrote this, one not to mention the pandemic once again, but I wrote this one early morning during the pandemic, and it goes like this. 
I've got stained teeth and burnt breath, but a beak that's staying alive in my chest. I've been waking up early to sit with the sunrise and watch your beauty meet my barely open eyes. The light breaks through, reminding me that I, I can make it through. And it's the first morning sip that reminds me of grace and what I can only imagine is a smile on your face. For a moment, it's just you and me and a cup of coffee, watching the waking world beginning to be. And the other morning I read, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed, and I'm beginning to see I do not need to see you to believe you are with me. You are. You are with me. And it's almost as if every sip brings us together. And if that brings us together, we'll never be apart. That's it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thanks. Very appropriate for the coffee hour. I'm going to like hang this one up on my wall next to our coffee maker. I got right you. There. <laughs> Walk a little slower. New book from uh, Rich and to Speak, Tanner Olson, poet. And uh, richandtospeak.com is the website. We have more poetry and more conversation with Tanner in just a moment. You're listening to the coffee hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are talking with Tanner Olson, poet of Written to Speak, written to speak.com. New book out today, Walk a Little Slower. And uh, before we went to break, great poem about coffee. Well, titled Coffee, right? Not all yes. about coffee. It's more like coffee and Jesus. Um, Which is pretty, a pretty strong sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I have a few mugs that have a that few. thing on them, yes, and a few wall hangings. <laughs> now, you mentioned this earlier. I think you, you answered this question already, but I want to come back to it. Who are you writing for? Or since I'm speaking to a writer, I should ask this in proper English. For whom are you writing? For who, whom do you write? Who, whom, whom cares, right? It's just right. I, <laughs> I write, I, like I said, I write for myself, but I also write for my friends as well. I write for the people who who follow my work. Oftentimes when we're talking about like social media, people are always trying to find like, we're finding a new audience where we're trying to grow or whatever. I've abandoned that philosophy. I want to write for the people who are with me, for the people who I'm sitting with, the people who are following my work already. I want to give them something that helps them to take another step or to remind to remind them that that hope is real that you are incredibly loved by god and to recognize that yeah this life is is really heavy and it's hard we're gonna go we're gonna keep going and we're gonna keep going together mm -hmm. can you talk a little about i don't know how how you put the words on the page because when i'm flipping through the book like a lot of times if we think of poetry it's like oh rhymed iambic pentameter but <laughs> But this is this is not <laughs> this is not that. Can you can you just talk about I don't know your your creative process of how some of these because some of them look like little short stories and some of them are like narratives. So what is that mm -hmm. creative process for you? Well, I, I think the thing that I have that maybe other poets don't is I don't know anything. I shouldn't say anything <laughs> about poetry, but I don't know a lot about I, I didn't take poetry classes in high school or college. I've just always been a fan of words and how words can move us and shake us and shift us and leave us different. And that's what I want to do with my writing is I want to kind of, you know, make people sit and think and wonder a little bit. And it's hard to do that when it's like you have to follow this set of rules. And for most artists, for many artists, like one of the reasons you get into it is because your mind runs wild and it's hard to run wild inside of a fence. And so there's all these rules for poetry, but there's also somewhere just like, just, just write and, and kind of see what happens. So if you're looking for a book of poetry that follows all these different rules and, um, 
it's this is not the book for you. But if you're looking for something that's honest and hopeful and real, like this is the book for you. I appreciate that you you included wonder in that. Mm. I don't think we spend enough time just in that that I don't know if realm is the word, but state of mind, state of mind of mm-hmm. wonder, mm-hmm. thinking, yeah. and how considering how helpful that is, how mm-hmm. good that is for us. I think we're so consumed by screens and mm-hmm. radio programs and podcasts. <laughs> oh wait, oh wait, <laughs> that, which are good, which are good things, but like. Yes. Yeah. What about, remember when you were five and you didn't have this stuff and you were just like, you know, happy and you could sit with your thoughts and you could play outside and you could just think and wonder and dream and create. I think that's what Mm -hmm. a book of poetry, I think that's what poetry helps us do is it's just kind of helps you not necessarily escape, but allows you to withdraw and and wonder. And I think, you know, when, when we talk about like resting and Sabbath, I think that's, that can be part of it. Mm-hmm. You wrote another poem. Well, you wrote a lot of poems. Um, <laughs> the one in Arcadia yes. sparked a question for me. Does the messiness of life provide for good poems? Yes. I, oh, see, I think, I think messy is honest, and mm-hmm. honesty makes for a really good poem. In, in my writing, I'm not, I'm not trying to be somebody else. And I'm, and I'm not trying to make you think that I am somebody else. I'm just trying to be me. And I think for most of my life, I've been a, you know, I'm a human being, but I've been like, I've been insecure. I've wanted to be like this or wanted to be like that. I've wanted you to see me like this in this light or in this way. But in my writing, it's just like, this is it. This is the messy, honest, sinner, saint, loved wondering person that I am for you to read about and to think with and to wonder alongside. So I do think, I think that, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. I think the messiness really allows other people to be honest as well. Like that's, that's the whole idea of like sharing stories, right? When, when you hear somebody share their story or their struggle or what they're going through, it allows you to be honest as well. And I really think that honesty helps us take a, a deeper step into, into growth, into becoming, into blooming. And so that's what I want to do with my writing. Um, so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, of, of being messy and honest about, I don't know, life in the last year and a half, how did the pandemic affect the, uh, the writing of these poems well they almost didn't happen because i couldn't i couldn't i mean this it's hard to be a touring artist when you can't go inside a building so it got to a point where it was like am i really gonna keep doing this or do i need to do something different do i need to get i'm not gonna say get a real job but get a job that looks a little different than you know being a a poet an artist a writer but it was one of those things where it was like i think this is actually what I'm supposed to be doing with my life is to write and to create and to share that with the world. And so kind of kept at it. And so that really allowed for a lot of these poems to um, become what they were because I, it wasn't like I wasn't wrestling with other things while I was writing this. It was, am I going to be able to keep doing this? And I think when you're, when you're put into a hard spot or a difficult spot, an emotional place, like it comes out in your writing. And at least for me, that's how it does come out. So, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of honesty and messiness in this book, but I, but I hope, hope, but it also shines through with hope. So in one sense, while it's, it eliminated a lot of opportunities for live events, Mm -hmm. it provided a lot of, um, a lot of content (laughs) for, for writing, um, in that time. So would you like to give us one more from walk a little slower? Yes. Yes. And this kind of, kind of falls into what we were just talking about with, you know, the changing of life and all of that. This one's called what I'll do today. And it's, um, it's, uh, it quotes Mary Oliver, uh, a fantastic poet and also quotes Jim Valvano, who's a former college basketball coach. And he has this incredibly famous speech that he gives at the ESPYs and he's, his body is full of cancer. And he kind of talks about what three things you should do every single day. It's an incredible speech. So if you haven't heard it before, just type in Jim Valvano online and the the speech will come up. But it's a short poem and it goes like this. Mary Oliver once asked, 
What do you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And I don't know. I don't know what I'll do with my one wild and precious life, but, but today I'll enjoy being alive. I'll open the window and feel the wind blow through. I'll turn off my phone, then find peace in the unknown. I'll thank God for grace and linger a little longer after she kisses my face. During the day, I'll sit beneath the glow of the sunshine, and at night, I'll pour a little more wine. I'll even write a few lines that don't rhyme. Today, I'll be my full self. I'll be me. Today, I can only be me. And today, like Jim Valvano once said, there are three things everyone should do every day. Laugh, think, and have your emotions move you to tears. And that's what I'll do today. That's what I'll do with my one wild and precious life. That is fantastic. I was hoping so you, you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've shared a couple of poems. We've talked a lot uh, about this book. What should we know about Walk a Little Slower? Why should our listeners check out this book? I, I think after the crazy year, that year, year or so we've had and just being alive in general, I think there are some reminders throughout this book that allow us to just slow down to rest and to be. The book is broken up into four major sections and then a, and a final fifth one. Slow down, lean in, hold fast, keep going. And then the last section is called Go On and Be Ordinary. And then I think this book, it, it just kind of, a, I, I hope it sees you. And as you read it, you're able to, to, to nod along, to underline and say, this is what I needed to hear. These are, you know, five or six words strung together that I can hold on to as I go throughout my day. And this book, of course, is not trying to take place of, of scripture or, or journaling or Bible time, but I think it's also something that can come alongside of it. Uh, that can kind of shine a little bit of light on the words of Jesus and the way that he's invited us to live and the hope of, of what is to come. So anyways, and, and I'm an independent artist, so you'd be helping support me to continue to do what I do. So there's that side of it as well. It's a very important side. <laughs> I would say, I, you know what, personally, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> How can we find Walk a Little Slower and uh, also keep up with what's going on with Written to Speak and Tanner Olson? Yeah, yeah. If you just visit written to speak dot com, I have, you know, about what I do and there's an online store. You can grab the book and you can see some upcoming events that I have. I'll be down in Texas on November 14th through the 20th ish sharing poems across the state of Texas. I'll be in Houston and Austin and Waco and out at Camp Lone Star in LaGrange um, sharing some poetry. But yeah, written to speak dot com. Or if you're an Amazon person, you can just type it into Amazon. Just type in walk a little slower. Tanner Olson, O-L-S-O-N not like the Olsen twins and it should come up. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get written a disclaimer. To yeah. <laughs> Very good. Written to speak a new book available today. Walk a little slower by Tanner Olson. Great poetry just to get us to pause. Well, to walk a little slower mm -hmm. and, and to wonder. Yeah. And ironically, I actually did that this morning. <laughs> I was out for run, but I've learned to not run the entire time, but actually walk some of the time and take in all the things around me. So that was very fitting. Maybe, maybe you inspired me because I've been reading this book lately. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> <laughs> Written to speak by Tanner Olson. Check out his new book, Walk a Little Slower. Tanner, always great to, to catch up with you and so excited about your new book coming out today. Thanks for being our guest. Hey, thanks for having me on. I hope to see you guys face to face soon. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs>